Welcome back to another episode of Digital Nomad Series with myself, Alejandra, and the CEO of Luz Collective, Lucy Flores. We chat with Lucy about what it means to be a digital nomad and so much more. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hola. Can you hear me? Yes. What was that? I'm coming to you live from Playa del Carmen from my Airbnb kitchen. So today specifically, we're going to be chatting about uh, authentically traveling um, and what that means um, for you um, and what that could potentially mean for others who are looking to make the move to another country, another city, uh, because, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so I do want to get started um, and let you introduce yourself a little bit. Um, and then we'll, our first question is just around what is authentic traveling to you? So um, yes, thanks. Um, Loose Collective, I co-founded, I'm now the CEO. Um, we launched about two and a half years ago. We are a Latina media brand. Um, we exist entirely to tell our stories um, because of the severe, severe underrepresentation of Latinas, our stories, our faces, what it means to exist <laughs> in the United States. Um, and, you know, and, and we were tired of, of being erased essentially out of history. Um, so decided to launch this brand. Um, I'm so thankful to everyone who joins us week after week um, for all of our various things that we're doing, including this series. Um, and also, you know, the amount of incredible support that we just get from all over, all over the country, sometimes all over the world, you know, I mean, our stories are universal. Um, and that's what's so great about, um, you know, being able to authentically represent, um, but also just authentically tell our stories. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not say something and mention something about the terrible, terrible atrocities that occurred on uh, Saturday, I think. It, no, I'm sorry, uh, not Saturday, but two days ago, like lost. It's been like a whirlwind week um, with the um, Asian community and the women. Um, and I believe also maybe I think there were men involved as well, but um, that were murdered by a white supremacist terrorist. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, I think that just like really speaks to how critical it is to have your stories told um, and to not be erased from history and to ensure that, you know, our contributions, whether it's Latinas, Asians, et cetera, um, are, are always um, in mainstream media are always being talked about because that's the only way in which we can overcome this hate. Um, so anywho, I, I really, I just wanted to say something about that because I just think it's, um, again, you know, we, we have to speak out, we have to speak out for ourselves and we have to speak out on behalf of one another. Mm -hmm. Um, so that being said, you know, I, I think it, it's a good segue into this, I don't know what we're calling authentic, uh, authentic traveling. Um, and I think for me, it just, it really is about that. It's about being you as an individual, being able to, um, experience life on your terms, um, never be defined by what people expect of you, um, what's expected of you either culturally, um, because of your gender, um, you know, people might, you might say you want to try something different. You want to pack up your bags and move across the world. And, you know, people will, might judge you. Your family might judge you. Your folks might tell you you're crazy. You know, that's like something that you can't do. Um, you know, people, people who discourage you from doing things. And, and I don't say this in a bad way because sometimes it's our own family, but people who discourage you from doing things is because they're too scared to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that that's really for me, what being authentic to yourself means. And then when you do start figuring out these new things that you're going to do, whether it's living a digital nomad lifestyle or, or anything really, um, it, it, it's then about how do you uh, fulfill what makes you happy? How do you center yourself first? Um, how do you always put yourself first and then 
you know, decide how you're going to navigate, you know, the rest of the world. But centering yourself first is so critically important in this um, because then you live out your values. Um, You know, that manifests for me uh, as a digital nomad in being really um, clear about, you know, my morals. Um, For example, I was living in Tulum when I first got here and Tulum is, breaks my heart. I discovered when I got to Tulum that um, it's being overrun by commercial development, um, by people who claim to be eco-friendly and, you know, are living this spiritual lifestyle. Um, The Mayan culture is being commodified by Americans, by Canadians, by, you know, a bunch of white people who are coming in and monetizing someone else's culture and making money, you know, off of, of ancient decades of practices that, that not only are destroying the environment, but are, are frankly destroying culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, after being there for a while, I, in addition to the technological challenges of being in Tulum, um, because Tulum's infrastructure does cannot support that kind of, um, of, uh, increase in, in tourism and development, you know, they, I found out later that, that I think it's something like 70% of all of the new development is not connected to wastewater treatment. There's, there's documentaries now, um, that are coming out that have been recently produced where the cenotes, the, the underground water system that throughout the Yucatan, but that, that um, keeps these waters so crystal clear and beautiful that have been that way for centuries um, is, is like being literally um, made toxic by fecal matter. Like some, some wastewater literally is just going right into directly injected into the underground rivers. Um, and so frankly, I just like, I, I was like, I can't, I can't be a part of this and I can't witness it. And now I do whatever I can to speak out about it, um, you know, and use whatever platforms I have to, uh, to let folks know that this is happening in Tulum. This is happening in Bacalar where I was, where I also visited. I mean, everywhere I go, I, I find out, you know, I, 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 I talk to the locals. I try to find out like what's happening there and how can I, um, have less of an impact and how can I be, um, part of a solution, you know, like how can I help my local community? Because now my local community happens to be in Mexico, you know? Um, and so I, I think that's like a big part is, you know, just like really being authentic to, to you and what matters to you. And you can do that anywhere. Yeah. I mean, literally everything you said is probably by definition, like being authentic to your travel experience, right? Because that is your community. So you're engaging, you're not looking to go and have the superficial experience where you do this spiritual journey and then you dip out or, you know, you eat the food and then you, you head out or, you know, all of these things that we see time and time again, people capitalize or monetize, and then that's it. There's nothing being done about the spaces that we we decide to take a part in or join or the people that we come in touch with, right? Um, so I think you say it so beautifully and give great examples of the way in which whether you're looking to travel to a new space and be there for six months, a year, or two days, or a week, these are the things that we have the ability to do to be more authentic with our, our mission, our purpose, and with the communities that we're coming in touch with. Um, yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, is that it's like, look, capitalism in general is extractive. It, it is what it is, right? Like we are in this global capitalistic um, construct and, and we're forced to live in it, you know, like at, you, there's, I know plenty of anti-capitalists who, um, you know, dream of some, some different system under which, you know, they, they try to operate, but at the end of the day, it's, it's impossible, right? We, we are fully integrated into a capitalistic system, but that does not mean that we cannot do and change various behaviors and things in order for us to be less extractive, 
-hmm. right? Like if you are going to travel to Tulum, then do your research, figure out how you can support a local uh, business or a local or um, a local um, uh, eco-conscious organization um, or, you know, whoever's doing work on the ground and figure out how you can be a part of supporting organizations and businesses that are actually trying to do something about it. Right. Like I, you, I, I think like to, to just say, well, you're never going to do anything. You're never going to purchase anything. You're never going to travel anywhere is, is not realistic. Right. And so we have to then ask ourselves, okay, how do I, how do I be better? How, how do I, like I said, become a part of a solution in some way? How can I, in Spanish, you know, pon tu, tu grano de arena, right? Like your little, your thing, on, what's salt. it called? Good, <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> you know, your thing of sand. Um, and, and, and yeah, and I think that, you know, we can all do that. And, and yeah, someone just said, you can be respectful and live authentically, even when traveling. And that's absolutely true. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't, because of COVID, obviously, you know, travel is not what it used to, it's probably not going to be what it used to be for a very, very long time. Um, and, and so even when we talk about just how we live, um, you know, and, and, and when you, so many people now are working from home and so they're able to, um, you know, spend months at a time in a different city or, you know, with family in different places, um, we can always think about how we participate in our community, even if it's not for a permanent, it, even if it's not in a permanent situation. Right. And so in your case, you know, you decided to make the move out there. Um, do you feel like this is your community? Have you adjusted? Do you feel like, man, I could see myself actually probably being here. From I feel like it's community to, to my community to the extent that I feel like I am conscious of community no matter where I go. Um, you know, like I, I'm one of those people, especially when I travel that, yeah, I'll do the touristy, you know, the quote unquote touristy stuff. You know, I, I want to see the, the sites, but I also spend as much time, if not more, um, talking to cab drivers, um, talking to locals, asking what do they do, where do they eat, you know, and, and discovering what the community is really like outside of just the tourist traps, um, and, and so I think, you know, I, I am not ready to settle anywhere, to be honest, <laughs> you know, I don't see myself living in one city for years at this point. Um, again, that's, what's so great about being able to work from home. And as long as you have an internet connection, you can do your job wherever you're at. And, and so, so no, I don't, I don't see this as a place that I want to live in for, you know, years and years, but I do see it as my community. Mm -hmm. I very much see it as my community. And especially because, you know, it's my roots, you know, that's the other wonderful thing about it is that, um, it's so funny here. They're, the Mexican people are really not used to interacting with Mexican Americans. Mm -hmm. And, and so I will, um, speak English and, and then I will also speak Spanish. I'm fully bilingual. And whenever I start speaking Spanish, they're like, oh, my God, why do you speak Spanish? You know, and I don't speak it with an accent. So they're always, like, amazed. And, and I'm like, porque soy mexicana. And they're like, oh, eres mexicana? And I'm like, yeah, my, you know, my parents were born here. Like, I was born in the United States, but I'm Mexican. And, and they're always like, wow, you know, and I'm just like, it's, it's pretty common, actually, folks, you, you know, there's, and so it's really cool, because you're also exposing um, the locals to culture that they're not aware of, you know, and, and they start to see like, wow, you know, that the, the Mexican culture, uh, and your pride and uh, your pride in your in your roots and your history is alive and well, even in a different country. You know, yeah. and so so it's great because it's it's again it's um it really is about being able to not only work and see and live in these beautiful places, but to you know develop your own personal development and yeah. and you know being able to like experience and and really like um and just have a, a much deeper meaningful journey for yourself, you know, as, as you begin to discover, 
um, like so many cool aspects of, of your culture and, and who you are and your gender. The other day there was um, for International Women's Day, I went to a local march and it was amazing. Like Playa del Carmen is a pretty small city. It's about a hundred thousand people. Uh, it's a lot of people, but you know, it's still fairly small compared to of course, major cities in the U S there. I was expecting a small March, you know, even in the United States, it's hard to get women, especially now, you know, during COVID you have to be very safe. Everybody was masked. Um, but it's hard to get folks out, you know? And I was, I was like so happy. I was shocked, but I was happy that there was, if not hundreds, maybe in the low thousands, like there, there, there had to have been at least, maybe I would say somewhere between one and 2000 women. And it was incredible. It was amazing. And, you know, they were, they were chanting and they had the best sayings and the best signs and, yeah. you know, speaking out against um, a femicide here in Mexico um, and, you know, sexism and it's rampant, you know, it's still so rampant. Um, and so being able to, you know, again, the reason why I found out about that March is because I have friends now at a spin studio that I go to because I love spin and I found a local spin studio and she messaged me and she's like, esta cosa va a pasar? you know, and I was like, yay, I'm going. So, uh, you know, it's little things like that where, uh, you know, again, even if you're not going to permanently be there, there's still so many different ways to um, still feel like you're a part of something. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you brought that up because I definitely wanted to hear about your experience with it. Um, and so for everybody who's joining us, feel free to drop some questions as well for Lucy um, around her travels um, and living in Playa del Carmen. Uh, but on the topic about uh, this march and it being around a femin in Spanish, it's, uh, how do you say it? Feminicidio? Femis fem femicidio. Femicidio. Yeah. Um, so around this topic, what what is your experience of like traveling as a woman? I know you have mentioned your brother was like, ah, oh, what if they kidnap you? What if they do this? What you know, like what's that experience like? Because I think for many of us, that is a thought that goes through our mind, right? Like if an everyday thought walking to your car is let me hold my keys in my hand or let me hold my cell phone very closely, or you pass around these tips like press the off button on your cell phone five times, like you I'm, I'm, I'm assuming maybe that you have these thoughts as well. Well, of course, but we're kind of socialized into having those thoughts just as yeah. women, you, you know, I mean, I, I can't remember a moment ever in my entire life where I was not concerned or um, uh, like hyper aware of potential violence that I could face. I think all women experience that. Um, so I, I think, and then, and then also with the situation that occurred with Sarah and I'm forgetting her last name, but the woman that was murdered, mm -hmm. kidnapped and murdered in London. Mm -hmm. um, you just, you always have to be aware period, you know? And I, I don't think it's anything. Um, I don't think it's anything unique to traveling. Um, I think mm -hmm. that as women, we are hyper aware all the time and even more so when you're traveling, yeah. you know, I mean, you just, you have to, you definitely have to make sure that you have your wits about you, um, that you're, uh, that you're using your common sense, you know, and not putting yourself in dangerous situations. Um, and ultimately that's, it just is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, Obviously, it's it's never a situation where where you're victim blaming. You know, we should be able to walk down the street at night. We should be able to wear whatever the hell we want to wear. Um, we should be able to do whatever we want to do. Um, mm -hmm. But you have. But at the same time, we have to be aware that that the risk of something happening to us increases when we're outside at night. You know, all by ourselves, and so maybe you shouldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's just, unfortunately, the, uh, the sad reality of how we have to live. But yes, I, I, I would not just dis have that discourage any woman from, um, from, from traveling, from, um, you know, seeing the world, you know, like it's yeah. a thousand percent. It, yeah. A thousand percent. And because, um, we have to say that out loud, I mean, it, it's something that I had to ask because I think that we hold on to our fears sometimes and internalize them. And it's important to vocalize that, hey, like you can do it. Like go travel the world, go see it. Um, right. And you know, and, and yes, is 
like, there's a lot of things that are scary, but, but right. You, we can't let that stop us, you know, and, and all we can do is our best, you know, and like take all the precautions that we can and, and really think through things, et cetera, and prepare Mm -hmm. as much as we can. And then that's it. And then do it. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. Um, So Andrea is asking us, how did you get ready to move as far as your job and money? Any tips, please? Well, fortunately, Mexico and a lot of places that that people uh, work from where there's large digital nomad communities, um, Bali is another place. Um, Folks go to Thailand, um, lots of parts of Mexico um, is because they're inexpensive. And so you can live very, very inexpensively in a lot of these places. I'm saving at least probably several thousand dollars a month. Um, I've done some back of the envelope math, but between I no longer have a car, so I don't have a lease on my car. I don't have um, car insurance. Um, I don't have the super expensive rent that I had in downtown L.A. Um, I, I don't have so many expenses that I used to have. And being able to live in paradise for minimal, a minimal cost. And, and you could even do it even more cheaply. You know, you just have to do some basic research, but you can find there's people paying $300, $400 a month in rent here. And they're not, and it's not in squalor. You know what I mean? It's a small place. It's going to be like a little studio or something, but if that's all you need and that's all you want, then you could do it. So, and same thing in Bali, same thing in all these different places. So it's really just, a, there's so many resources out there. Um, there's Facebook groups, there's uh, bloggers, there's YouTube um, travel influencers. And, and so it's super easy to get the information that you need in order to prepare. Um, but, you know, you do have to ensure also that you could do it with work. Um, I had to make sure I had a lot of Wi-Fi connectivity issues when I first got here. I had to figure that out. Um, I also have a friend who was not supposed to, that his company did not allow for um, international travel, essentially working from an international place, and he got fired. So, you know, you have to be very careful um, and make sure that your employer is okay with you being in a different country, um, you know, and, and things like that. So you, you, have, you do have to take some precautions and do some research. But outside of that, there's not much really to prepare for. You know, yeah. like you just, you just go and pack your bags and figure it out. You know, it's the hardest decision, right? Like it's, it's super easy. It's not scary at all. Like it's super easy. Um, the other thing is that if you're not familiar with the language, you should definitely at least try to brush up on some words, you know, like that's been another thing that has been like, absolutely like, uh, just like horrifying to see like the amount of English speaking people here who get upset that, um, that the workers don't speak English. It's, it's, you know, especially, especially knowing how often, um, people in the United States, you know, are constantly screaming, speak English, you know, and then they come here and literally demand that the Mexicans speak English, you know, it's, it is, it's like, it's terrible. And it's always this, it always, it's the same profile, you know, they're usually American, and, and, and they get really upset and they're like screaming at people and, and it's just so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious, you know? So I, I am a big proponent that yes, you know, if you're in a different country, you should at least speak some of the language, you know, absolutely. Um, but, but, you know, again, you should, you should at least know a couple of words, right. And not demand that the locals speak your language. Yeah. Well, we're getting close to ending um, this live. So I did want to touch on the idea that, you know, you're having all these new experiences. Um, What's that been like? Has that expanded clarity on on your purpose, on your mission, on the work that you're doing at Loose and for yourself? What has that been like? Because I think a lot of people might be considering making the move to a different country, a different city to kind of find themselves, right? And get these epiphanies as well. I, you know, look, every, every place that you go to, every decision that you make is, is serving its purpose, whatever that purpose is for you. 
Um, and, and it, it's what you make of it. The, the environment is going to be what you make of it. So I think for me, I, um, you know, I definitely came after my dad passed in October, which was a very difficult thing for me. Um, and so I, I was very much trying to move forward in my healing journey and, and yeah, there was, you know, there was a lot of challenges and difficulties with that, but ultimately, um, I, you know, I've recently been doing Reiki, um, Reiki healing. I have, um, I started therapy, um, after I've never done it before. And I've been saying it for years and years and years that I, I needed to do it, that I wanted to try it and just never did. Um, and finally said, okay, you know, like I just need to do this. I just need to take that first step. Um, so I, I, I started doing that. Um, and, and yeah, I, you know, I think that it's, you have to, if you're looking for something, you will find it, but you have to look for it. And if you don't, then it's not going to come right. You have to be intentional about the things that you want. And I, I think for me, I, 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 again, I always emphasize it doesn't have to be at, at, during your travels. It doesn't have to be as living a, as a digital nomad. It, it can just be in your everyday life, right? That, that if you are intentional about the things that you need and the things that you want to accomplish, then those opportunities will present themselves. Um, and that's definitely been the case for me, although it did take a couple of months for me to, you know, like I feel be open to um, receiving the things that I needed. So, uh, and I do think that being in Playa del Carmen, being in Mexico, being, um, in a place, our culture is so spiritual, um, you know, and, and really connecting again, like I said, into the local community. Um, my Reiki healer is, um, a a long time, um, resident of Playa del Carmen, um, Mexican woman. She's incredible. Um, and, you know, and so it's, it's, it's nice for me to know that not only am I supporting, um, local, you know, local healers and, and being a part of the local community. Um, but that I feel like it's something that's, that's very natural to, to them. And it's not, again, like I said earlier, like somebody coming in and, and, and monetizing somebody else's culture and somebody else's practices. So, um, so yeah, the, it, it's been a, it's definitely been a great experience. One that I don't think I would have been able to really tap into if I were elsewhere. Um, but also because I, I came with that purpose. So, you know, um, when you do that, I think like, like I said, it, it manifests for you. Yeah. But I mean, that's a perfect way to, to wrap this up, right? Um, you are allowing us to, you're almost validating those things that we think that, that we can do from here, right? Like we can do therapy from wherever we are, we can take all these steps. Um, and so you had the intention of, of doing those things when, when you move to Playa, but they can be done anywhere. So that's right. Good, yeah. Good call to action for everybody who's on the live and everybody who will be watching this afterwards. Thanks so much, Lucy. No um, problem. If there's anything else you want to say, um, if not for everybody else, um, for everybody who's watching us, please join us again next month. We will be posting um, the next um, Alpha Latina digital series that's coming up. Um, and if you are joining us and a part of our community, uh, please join us in our crowdfunding campaign um, for our writer's room. We want to continue to do this work, tell our stories, uh, be unapologetic and show up because it is hard. It is difficult, but this creates a space for everybody to be open um, and to be thoughtful about the things that we're all dealing with as Latinas. So thanks, yeah. everybody. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Bye.